So uh, boomer humor has kind of been the the thing lately to the point that I'm late and I don't actually think it's the thing anymore, but uh, it's not quite dying in terms of the conversation field. So we're going to talk about it a bit. And there's a specific thing that kind of like prompted this thought today. So a couple weeks ago, I saw a video by a guy called Scott Kramer and he made a video about Ellen's boomer showing, which we will also get to in a moment. But I just kind of wanted to, to go over the entire concept real quick. So obviously the okay boomer thing, is it, it sweeped the nation and it's upsetting a lot of older people, which I find really funny because it tends to be the older people who keep talking about how sensitive the younger generations are, but they literally can't handle being called a boomer. There's that Latter-day Saint news host that basically tried to compare it to the new N-word because that's reasonable. But yeah, I just always find it funny when the people that just are constantly complaining about the new generation being whiny and overly sensitive being such bitches about this. Like we're all just having a great time living our lives while you guys are still mad that Applebee's is going out of business because people don't want to eat their shitty food. And they always hate being called out about these things, which is why they hate the boomer meme so much. Like they can spend all their time talking trash about the younger generation that they raised, by the way, like they raised this, the next generation and then have the audacity to get upset when we call them whiny. But the OK Boomer thing itself basically started to die to me pretty quickly. But I think what really started to kill it was when Fox bought the copyright to the term and we're going to make a reality television show out of it or something. Because if that's not just the most boomer move you could possibly do, that's even more boomer than High School Musical, the musical, the series. But once again, the oldies are trying to take away the memes. As mentioned, there's that really horrible guy with that horrible statement that he's thankfully since deleted because it was just so bad. But some people are trying to say that it counts as harassment or workplace abuse or all sorts of crazy things that if a younger generation said, hey, I'm feeling discriminated against because you keep calling me a millennial, they, they would call us too sensitive. Just putting that out there. But obviously the late night shows got their hands on it and have done different things. I think most of them are pretty, pretty chill about it. Like Stephen Colbert openly admitted that like, hey, I'm technically a boomer, but oh my God, you guys are being whiny. So while some of them get it, some of them are just the exact reason why this probably took off as well as it did. So as mentioned a couple weeks ago, I saw a video by a guy called Scott Kramer. He made a video specifically about Ellen DeGeneres and it was something like, Ellen, your boomer is showing where she had a girl on stage and she asked her if she knew, you know, what a map was, what a compass was, what a rotary phone was, different things like that. And then ultimately tried to get her to know how to use them like with a phone book to try to find something. As if Ellen DeGeneres does not just use her cell phone to find all of the aforementioned information and perhaps does not even know how to use an actual map at this stage in the game. Okay. Okay, this is not that funny. Calm down, Karen. And this seems like something she regularly does, so here's her doing it again, but with a boombox, a typewriter, and a film camera. As if, like, all of those items aren't now kind of seen as, you know, vintage and cute. Like, I don't think typewriters have ever hit a point where people don't know how to use them or that people aren't interested in them. Like, I'm pretty sure you can walk down to Urban Outfitters and buy a typewriter right now. And it's pretty boomer that you didn't know that, Ellen. Have you ever used one of these? No. But you knew what it was. How do you know what it is? From movies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't look up at the camera as if she just said something really stupid. Like movies and television show are a very common way for people to learn how to use things. And there are current movies about now where there's kids with typewriters and just having a good time. You can't make fun of the ones who like using them because of the history behind them. And you can't make fun of the ones who don't use them because we've moved on from them. But anyways, this isn't anything new for Ellen. She's done this whole like millennial versus boomer thing or generation thing for for ages this is actually like a pretty common shtick on her on her show apparently uh, just from a quick YouTube search so here's a clip from 2016 we live through the war let's make whoopee and <laughs> for you Millennials making whoopee is uh, like Netflix and chill <laughs> That's what it is. she is so Super proud of that joke. But let's actually get into the part where she's, you know, talking to the boomer and the millennial. Because at least when it's verses, it, it kind of shows that there's like a generational gap that like, they don't know. Except, you know, you asked one person about YOLO and Tinder, which are probably seen as some of the more negative aspects of modern day advancements. And then you asked the kid about the Beatles. Name all four Beatles. Ooh. Uh, actually, 
Um, Paul McCartney. Yep, that's one. <laughs> John Lennon? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh! Yes. I didn't know that! Yeah. Michael, no, not Michael Jackson. <laughs> and look, okay, I'm a millennial. I could name you the Beatles. But honestly, it seems like she's kind of acting. I'm assuming it's just kind of because she's very nervous. But you know, she got two of them. Some people just don't know band member names. That's okay. But still, this is this is cringy. And before I keep going, it's not that I like dislike Ellen or anything. I think all of these like, you know, show hosts have their own separate issues, but it's not like she's Wendy Williams. But she's been doing this stuff for years. And like I said, recently the attitude seems to be a little bit worse because less so the focus of being like, does this older person and know this modern thing and does this modern teen know this older things it's very much like let's just put in a bunch of outdated stuff on a table and make fun of this kid for not knowing how to use it because it's completely obsolete technology not completely there's still reasons why you could use any one of these things but for the most part they're not necessary so to illustrate this point one of the worst things about getting older that everybody does, whether they want to or not, is that you suddenly start getting this attitude of, you know, like everything was better when I was a kid or this version of what you have now was better when I was a kid. And sometimes I will maintain that's true. I've seen some of the cartoon shows and what they're marketing to kids today. It seems like ass. No one makes charbroiled burgers as good as Carl's Jr. But the, the counter to that is that you just start feeling older as every year passes and people don't remember something that you loved as a child. And that's the trade-off. With experience of life comes m misery of life passing you by. Jesus, the cut, sorry, I didn't mean it to get that dark. It's fine, but you know, so whether it be rotary phones, disposable cameras, floppy disks, moon shoes, or CD Walkman, older generations remember them fondly, but 2019 doesn't need them. But now, instead of gracefully accepting the obsolescence of their past and feeling old like they're supposed to, like if I'm feeling old in my 20s, y'all have to start feeling old when you're in your 40s and 50s. It's good to feel young too though, but like you can't take that away from us. The the oldies are not trying to reverse that by just making the younger generation feel bad about themselves. When it's their fault if their kids don't know what these things are. If you didn't tell your kid what a rotary phone was, how are they supposed to know? That's ultimate boomer energy, complaining about problems that they helped cause. <laughs> not that it's a problem if you don't know what a rotary phone is. I don't, like, what, are, what world are we in? Yeah, if you're lost in the wilderness and have a compass, it would probably be good to know how to read a map. But the reason why people aren't using these on road trips and stuff anymore is because for one, they're entirely impractical. And two, everybody has cell phones now. And even if you don't have cell phones, you can print off the exact directions from the internet before you go. And then instead of trying to plot your way on a map, of like the entirety of the United States or something. You just have the exact directions of where you need to go. And if you have the phone in your hand, it's gonna update you as you're going. And it's gonna let you know if there's traffic incidents, if there's constructions, if there's tolls, where the next gas station is. And it's just gonna kindly tell you while you're driving as you're going. So you don't have to fumble with a map, which is not safe. But even the cooler late night hosts kind of do this every now and again. And most of them don't mean anything bad about it. Like they'll be interviewing somebody and somebody says something about a particular music artist or maybe a television show that wasn't really popular when they were younger or even born yet. And they just point it out. Spice Girls is a really big outlet for that. But in London, Sporty Spice came backstage. Oh. And th spice. that meant something to you. That did. Did you follow the Spice Girls? You're too young for that. You you really you are that excited about the Spice Girls? You know, they I think have been broken up longer than you've been alive. <laughs> like I don't think you shared the planet with a fully formed original Spice Girls. So earlier this week I saw an interview with Jimmy Kimmel, who I would actually consider to be probably one of my preferred like late night talk show host. You know, I really love what he did with the 9-11 uh, the first responders when he was like standing up for them. So I think he's a pretty cool dude. But he was interviewing Billie Eilish. And in this interview, he started to like quiz her on random old like music artists and then like sometimes like a random toy just to see if she knew who or what they were. You um, know who Madonna is. I do know who Madonna is. You know, uh, can you name a Van Halen? Who? <laughs> no, I'm who gonna it? start crying. Sorry. Um, have you heard of Cindy Lauper? Yes. Huey Lewis. Some. 
No. And, and it, it started making her feel bad. You're making me look so dumb. <laughs> like the way he's wording the question sounds like he's setting you up, even if it's just a curiosity. And he even says it right here. So the point what of what I'm trying to make is you're younger than I am. Yeah. <laughs> Like, at least he knows that, but then it's still just kind of like, then why are you antagonizing this, like, 17-year-old girl with these questions then? And hey, at least she clapped back. But I was 17 in perhaps the greatest year in American history, 1984. Like, the number yeah, one year. Experts agree. <laughs> if I could go Who was through born a... after that in this room? After 1984? <laughs> And then Kimmel actually says something that I, I think just sheds a lot of light on this. It's not a matter of being dumb. If you ask me questions about 1943, I probably wouldn't know the answers either. And that's the thing. I feel like the back in my day jokes were something started by boomers and Generation X as a way of, you know, making fun of something of an older generation that annoyed them. So why are they trying to do it now in a way that makes it seem like they're the cool ones and not like the old stodgy people? But yeah, I'm assuming that if I went through enough of these like late night interviews with younger celebrities, I would probably get a lot more of this because it's not all of it's gonna be like Ellen where they're specifically going out of their way to like use terms like millennial and boomer in the titles to, to catch people's attention. It's just gonna be something in passing. Like it's gonna be, you know, a, a cast member of Stranger Things saying that they're a huge fan of The Clash and someone being like, well, my goodness, was your parent even alive when The Clash were at the height of their career? It's just gonna be something Something, it's just gonna be something in passing like that where they don't really mean anything about it and that's not the problem. But I do think it is a problem when you start bringing up a bunch of kids on a stage and asking them to use a bunch of things that are obsolete now to make your audience laugh. So that's gonna do it for today's video. I just kind of think all of this is a very interesting phenomenon happening because uh, it was such a simple response that just really ignited a bunch of frustration and anger in people who really like to say that the younger generation's too sensitive. So I'm always gonna laugh at that because it's just so, it's so, it's upsetting because of the state of things, but it's also really funny. And if that's all we have, I'm gonna take it. So thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new and you're into that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, catch you all later. And as always, I hope you have a fantastic day. It's Thanksgiving in America, so happy Thanksgiving to Americans. Peace out. That's not what I say when I leave. If you deviate from an outro at all, it just, it, you lose everything.